without an import should win tonight's game because remember Shell they're playing with Lester Rowe who's very first, Rowe for <laughs> no pun intended yes no. he is very Rowe in Philippine basketball correct for the first time tonight so they're still trying to gel with him he's trying to gel with them so that's a a very difficult thing to do right in your first game Joe that's right uh, Pose it or not, it makes his move. A frontal assault on the basket is no good. Lester Rowe towering high for the rebound. Man, he can leap. And Chito Loizaga is forced to foul him. Only the first personal for Chito. Third team foul for great taste, while Shell is already in team foul trouble. Here's Philip Cesar against Manny Victorino. The inside pass to Abbe King. It's fought for the foul this time. Another thing, Joe, the great taste team, whether or not they have an import, they're always tough to beat, Joe. That's right. Okay, here's Lester Rowe, the turnaround of Abbe King is no good. Struggle for the rebound. And it's zero hour for the first quarter with great taste up by a commanding 12-point lead. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, we're certainly glad to see that Howard Carter, that's him in civilian clothes, the guy whom Lester Rowe just replaced, is still on good terms with the Shell of the Dream Buckbusters. I'm afraid I cannot say the same with the way the relationship between Great Taste and Wally Rank ended. Yes, <laughs> Joe. Wally Rank, as a matter of fact, I hear, has left the Philippines. And here's uh, Howard Carter, probably one of the best imports or better imports we've seen in Philippine basketball. And there's a big smile on his face, which yes. shows you that he is happy with the way things turned out. And that's the attitude of a real professional player. After all, like we said, Shell was not unhappy with him. They were, as a matter of fact, very happy, except that the circumstances were just not right for his presence in the Shell team. Definitely, Joe. Okay, we're 10 seconds into the second quarter. Bogsan Renato has it against Chito Lizaga. He was extremely prolific in that winning game against Northern Consolidated last week. Philip says our misses from the corner. You know, we've got some stats here. Great Taste, uh, or rather Shell, having more rebounds, 17 to Great Taste, 12. But then Great Taste shot 50% from the floor, 12 out of 24. While Shell only shot 36%, 9 out of 25. Turnovers, look at this. Shell with 9, Great Taste only with 4. And fast break points, the Great Taste machine, Joe, 11 points. Shell, nil. That's right. And Ricky Brown owes Manny Victorino one for that last basket he converted. Manny provided him with an excellent pick. Lazaro, completely unmolested. He misses. Chito Loisaga scrambles for the loose leather. He brings it downtown. The vaunted great taste running machine is once again manifest here. But it was an unproductive thrust. 32-18, 14-point lead. Adornado right down the middle. He misses. Mali Victorino controlling the defensive rebound. Bogues has been mi missing a lot, uh, Joe, the first quarter and here at the start of the second quarter. Right. Now, I also noticed the reason uh, Great Taste is getting away with a lot of fast break points is uh, some of the players from Shell, notably Adornado, he doesn't come down right away on defense to defend. So he should forget, even if he misses a shot, never mind, just get down there and defend. Well, let's watch Bugs at work against Willie Pearson. He took on Willie one-on-one, -on -one, and Willie Foul. just Pearson. picked up his first personal. Well, this game is certainly giving us a big appetite. And talking of big appetites, well, authentic native dishes are always at their best when you get them at Kamayan Restaurant along Pasay Road, Padre Fauda, and at their newest outlet in Edza Green Hills. Okay, Adornado is rested by Coach Freddy Webb now. Marquez comes in. That could be a good substitution. Maybe Freddy Webb wants to let Adonado rest on the bench and think about the game. Come down for defense. That's right. Uh, he seems to be a little hot under the collar for some reason or another. In the meantime, the great pace coffee makers continue to go to town. That last basket by Chito Loizaga just up their lead to 16 points. With a little help from Lester Rowe. I think he was responsible for the two <laughs> points, actually, Joe. 9.52 to go. Here's Lester against Abi King. Oh, he brought it very well to the hoop. 36-22. They need a cluster of that to get back into the contest. Here's Ricky Brown, harassed by a double team. Finds Loisaga open. He makes his move. The barreling Loisaga goes to Abi King, and the contact whistle blows. Well, there's not much switching that defensive rotation for the Shell Bugbusters. That's the reason why one-on-one -on -one Great Taste Coffee Makers are scoring on them. After all, this Great Taste team... They're good individual players. Lot of talent, uh, Joe. Exactly. Second personal on Romy Ag. One more time around the block for the Great Day Coffee Makers. Time down to nine and a half minutes before the halftime break. Ricky Brown has it. 
Blaze Naga setting up a pick. Yes, sir. Again, there was no switching there between uh, Marquez and Ang. They should already know that once Ricky Brown goes around the pick, he will take that shot from the outside, so there should be a jump switch right away. Well, Ricky Brown seems to be making up for lost mileage in that game against NCC. He's already got 17 points this early. In the meantime, Marquez makes his presence felt with his first basket from 18. 39-24 is still an imposing 15-point advantage for great taste. They're off to a rousing start. Overhead pass by Conquiel Lord to Mane Victorino. Off the glass shot. 41-24, 17-point lead for great taste. Romy Young bringing the ball down for it for the blue shirts of Freddie Webb. Here's Ray Lazaro confronted by Conquiel Lelor, and the ball goes up the baseline. The Bugbusters will keep it. Yes, very good call by referee Ledesma. The ball uh, hitting the foot of Alejo Alalor. And Freddie Webb is restlessly shuffling his men. He just sent in Hubinal for Philip Cesar. Yes. Well, what Shell will have to do first, Joe, is really settle down in defense. Huh? They're not playing good defense. They're letting great taste take the open shot. Unproductive trust by Shell. Here's Ricky Brown. He pulls up against Ang and misses. Tote Marquez soaring high for that rebound. Ang brings it downtown for Shell. The Buckbuster is on the attack. Here's Tote Marquez. He scored the last looper for Shell. And now he's taking over the Orchestra leaders' chores. Lester Rowe inside heavy traffic. Wow. What a beautiful move inside the paint. He's an interior artist, all right. In due time, I'm sure Lester Rowe will learn where his teammates position themselves. And the, the teammates will have to keep on cutting when he's got the ball in the paint. So if he's double, triple team, Joe, he will be able to give assist passes to his teammates cutting in. All in due time, Mr. Trillio, especially after he has made his trip to the dentist tomorrow. <laughs> Illegal defense. A warning on Shellos Adrenaline. Subsequent violations will automatically result in technicals. Brown, again getting a pick from Chito Loizaga. He gets it right back to Chito. Beautiful defensive rotation by Shell, forcing the outside charge, but Brown continues to hit gold from outside. Oh Another three-pointer for Ricky, and he's already got 20 to his credit. 20 points with 7 minutes, 21 seconds remaining here in the second quarter, Joe. 44-26, uh, turnaround by Lester Rowe. And Manny Victorino had the inside track on the rebound. Who says great taste needs an import, Joe? They've got one. <laughs> Loizaga, he's got the moves of an import, too. Yep. You know, one mistake Shell seems to be making is they're keeping up with a running game of uh, uh -huh. the coffee makers. 44-26 still to count. 6.53 to go in the first half. Uh, and Mr. Felipe says, foul, Toto y Marquez. Foul, Chitolo Saga is down on the court, Joe. Um, Let's see if we caught that piece of action in slow-mo. Second knockdown of the game. First was suffered by Lester Rowe, and now here's Chitolo Saga getting up off the floor. And Doc Ben Salud asks him, are you all right? I'm all right. I'm all right after this time, all he says, and we'll be back. Barry Moy, Tabletang Lunas sa Almorana. Well, don't ask me the name of this distinguished-looking gentleman. He only reminds me of Christopher Lee in the same way. My partner here reminds me of Christopher Reeve. Of course, Ramon Romano reminds me of Christopher Columbus. 44-26 <laughs> is the count. 6.49 remaining before the halftime break. Brown against Bernie Fabiosa, who's back in harness for the Buckbusters. Brown, look at the dexterity and the agility of this young man. He hit the deck, but he kept the ball alive. Lester Rowe coming out of nowhere, and he's going to go to the hoop. He goes to Bernie Fabiosa. Easy. Oh, I was about to say easy two points. It didn't come as easy as that. It'll have to come the hard way from the 15-foot line. Ponky oh, Lelor with his first personal. That was a good foul given up by Ponky. Now we shall have an idea of how Lester Rowe performs from the free-throw line. By the way, bugs that are not of Shell and Abbe King of great taste, they are two of the original members of Grosby's first five, sporting the latest styles in Grosby footwear, the official basketball shoes of